I don't know, did... Good morning, everyone. So we are live, but I'm going to go ahead and wait just another minute or so before we officially call the community meeting to order uh, so a few more assembly members can arrive. Again, good morning. Thanks, folks, for joining us. We're going to wait another minute or so to get started for a few more assembly members to join. Thanks again. Let me try that. Can you guys hear me better now? Great.
Again, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are about to get started. Um, so thanks again for joining us. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks, uh, folks, for your patience. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and call this Assembly Rules Committee uh, meeting of the whole uh, to order. We're scheduled today from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, let's go ahead and start with a roll call, please. Felix Rivera. Present. John Weddleton. Here. Jamie Allard. Ms. Allard, I know you're here. Can you audibly let us know that you're present? We'll come back to you. Mr. Constant. Here. Thank you. Mr. Dunbar asked to be excused today. He's on guard duty. Ms. Kennedy. Uh, Ms. Kennedy is um, getting on her uh, computer. Um, as folks know, for a live event, you can't do this on your phone or on a iPad. You have to be on a laptop or a computer for this. Ms. LaFrance. Mr. Perez Verdia. Mr. Peterson. Present. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Ms. Zalatel? Here. Thank you. I'm going to go back to Ms. Allard. Okay. Ms. Kennedy. Okay. Yes, Mr. Perez Verdia? Yes, I'm here. Great. You have a. Thank you. I uh, also want to know that uh, we are joined by uh, three additional staff, Dean, uh, Barbara, and Desiree. Um, so I am uh, really excited to officially test our new hybrid meeting system. Uh, this has been a long time coming, so a huge thanks to the clerk's office and especially 
Desiree Barbara and Lily for your work on helping make this happen. Thanks to the OIT office for your help and to the assembly members who helped test the system over the last couple of months. I am hopeful that today will be a success uh, and a success that we can replicate uh, for other committee meetings and work sessions. Uh, folks should be able to get in the queue like normal. Um, only Mr. Weddleton and I are here, uh, John and I are here in person. Um, so I will manage that and then I'll keep track of the queue on Teams. One more thing before we officially start. I hope people will be able to stay after the end of this committee meeting. Uh, John and I plan to record the first part of our Polar Plunge video after the committee meeting is over. Uh, big thanks to Marissa for helping put this video together, which will help us to raise funds for Special Olympics Alaska. Um, okay. As usual for rules committee meetings, uh, feel free to stay informal. Um, that's how I uh, like to run these. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, under new business, we'll start with the report from the assembly chair and municipal clerk. Um, so a few things for me to report. First is on the I Can't Breathe resolution. Uh, we continue to make progress on several of the commitments made in the resolution that was passed on June 2nd. Uh, thanks to those who were able to attend the second anti-racist and racial equity dialogue on Wednesday. Looking forward to the next session in January. The clerk's office will be sending out the YouTube link for those who weren't able to attend earlier in the week. Aside from the trainings, we've also been working with the clerk's office uh, to move forward with two other commitments in the resolution, uh, community dialogues and racial equity assessments. Earlier this week, I signed a contract with the Alaska Black Caucus, who will be partnering with the assembly to organize and host dialogues with various communities of color. The clerk's office staff have also put together research on how to how other jurisdictions complete racial equity assessments of policies they consider. And they've looked at the following jurisdictions, uh, Juneau, Austin, Texas, uh, the Bay Area in California, New York City, Seattle, and St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, the idea being that after, uh, once the chief equity officer comes on board, whoever that may be and whatever they do come on board, uh, we will work with them uh, to implement uh, some type of uh, framework for us to consider racial equity in our policies. Uh, on the assembly office remodel, things are moving forward well. We are finalizing some of the specific design elements and the construction should hopefully start soon. We're still on track to get this done in early 2021. A redo of the assembly website with the ANITA contracts approved, RDI will be able to begin their work. The previous, excuse me, the previous website working group, which has two assembly members on it, is mobilized again uh, to work with RDI on this project. Uh, we should be able to get this work done hopefully in early 2021. Homelessness communications. Uh, this week, the working group has approved much of the planned communications outlined in the framework put together by our contractor, Northwest Strategies. Uh, these communications should be out in the public airwaves and social media soon. Uh, letterhead, so the clerk's office has asked Repographics to put together a letterhead for each individual assembly member to assist you with your own individual communications. This will likely look very similar to the type of letterhead you see from legislators in Juneau. And this is um, something I think the clerk's office um, has requested to help ease some communications uh, issues that assembly members have had. Assembly aides and communication aides, I'm very happy to report that our two assembly aides, Heather and Christy, and our communications aide, Marissa, have all agreed to stay on with the assembly through March of next year. We'll look at staffing needs and any possible adjustments for our department during the first quarter budget revision process in April. Testimony upgrades. Uh, so Jennifer in the clerk's office has been working on a couple of upgrades to our testimony system. I wanted to put on everyone's radar. You'll be hearing more directly from Jennifer soon. First is a testimony form that should make it easier for folks to sign up for phone testimony, both for the public and for the clerk's office uh, to keep track and accurately make sure we're getting that list together. And also for folks to submit their written testimony. Second is a phone queue system so that we can queue a few folks up at a time during public hearing and audience participation, lessening the time spent dialing at our meetings. That is it for me. Is there anything else members would like me to report on or any questions?
All right, not hearing anything. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to report from the municipal clerk. Barbara. Thank you, Felix. I'm um, hopefully trying to share my uh, um, a report that I emailed to you. I'm on my desktop, but I'm not seeing it. Um, thank you, Felix. I'm sure you saw this report in your packet, and uh, I always tell you three things. So um, this time, um, there are three things I'd like to point out in the audit, and um, Felix also asked me to share the background of this. And when I started about nine years ago for working in the assembly department, um, there were some problems in the ombudsman's office. There were a thousand open cases. And so at that time, um, sh shortly after that, there was a problem in the clerk's office with an election. So I recommended <coughs> to the assembly that they have periodic management audits, uh, internal audit of the municipal clerk's office administration, the municipal clerk's office elections, and the ombudsman's office, so that the assembly gets a report. I did hear someone say that. I heard someone say something about muting. Can we make an announcement that people should not touch any of the phone numbers in the hall this morning? Sure. Uh, so, can you guys hear us again? Yes. Great. So, um, uh, if folks on the live event, uh, please don't mute or unmute any of the phone numbers. Uh, Desiree is here and she will handle that. Um, I think that's what caused us to uh, not be able to hear anymore. Some someone muted one of the phone numbers. Um, okay, so right. let's, let's go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, let's go ahead, Barbara. Barbara. We can continue. So, so the, the thing in the report, report that I'd like to point out.
Yes, this is a test. Are we working? Yep. Sounds better. Okay. So I'm going to point out three items in the audit management review. On page one, the first is that um, internal audits found the clerk's office to be well run. I really appreciate that. I think it's true. We have an awesome staff that do so many things. On the second page, there are actually on the first uh, page at the bottom, it also encourages cross training. I think that you know that this is happening in the clerk's office. We are working really hard to make sure that we don't have silos and that only one person can perform a function. It puts both the clerk's office and the assembly in jeopardy when someone wants to take a vacation, for example, or is unexpectedly out. We continue to work on that. And on the last page, there is a comment about staffing, and this is something that we've had ongoing discussions with the assembly leadership, and we discussed it with all of you last year at budget, and you gave us the extra two positions in 2020. I want to make sure that even with those two extra positions, internal audit has expressed some concern about our staffing. Um, I think we all love what we do, but I think we're doing a lot and we want to make sure that we stay on top of this and don't end up in a situation where we lose staff because it's too much work. But outside of that, I'm super proud of this audit and wanted to share it with you. And that's it for me. Great. Thanks so much, Barbara. And um, yeah, we really appreciate all of the work that the clerk's office does. Um, are there any questions for Barbara? Yeah, Meg. Great, thank you. I wasn't sure how we were entering the queue, so perfect. Um, good to know that the chat still works for that. Um, I just want to echo, um, you know, the findings of the audit. The uh, clerk's office is really the backbone. Um, of a lot of the work the assembly does. Um, they've been responsive anytime I've needed anything. Um, and I think specifically through the pandemic um, have been adaptable um, and really worked with us, um, our constituents and the residents of Anchorage to try to make things as accessible as possible. So um, huge kudos to uh, Barbara and the entire clerk staff. Um, I um, promote all the time um, the Facebook page for the clerk's office. If you want to stay in the know, that's where to be. So um, thank you so much for all of your hard work. Thanks, Meg. All right, not seeing anyone else, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, so we'll move on to assembly priorities. Uh, so the communications uh, subcommittee and I have provided our edits and comments to Northwest Strategies on the first comprehensive update. Uh, so this should be going out next week, at least that is our goal. Um, I wanted to just take a quick second to walk you guys through what this looks like, at least the online version. And then there'll be a PDF printable version that's going to look a little bit different as well. So Barbara, if we can go ahead and share that, please. All right, so this will be, again, the online version. And from what I understand, we've actually had quite a few folks sign up um, to receive this. Uh, Northwest Strategies did an, uh, a, uh, an email drive, I forget what the exact term is, uh, to try to get more folks uh, to sign up uh, for the email, email newsletter. Um, so they'll be receiving this sometime next week. Um, so if we can go ahead and just scroll, scroll through this. Um, so this goes through uh, each of our five different areas in our 2019-2021 priorities document, and it um, goes through each of our goals and where we are in our goals, whether we've started it in progress or completed. And then it also goes through some of the accountability measures and some of the metrics uh, to back up and, and show where we are in a lot of the different areas. So. You know, particularly when you look at, I think the public safety one has some uh, good uh, bars and graphs to show. The homelessness one has some good data on there. And then uh, we reached out to some of our partners 
for example, on quality of life. We got some good data from uh, the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation as well as, as, well as the Home Builders Association. Um, so uh, I think this is gonna be a good snapshot uh, for the public to see where we are on meeting some of our goals um, that we have outlined again in the 2019-2021 priorities document. Uh, we can go ahead and stop sharing that. Uh, as a reminder, over the holiday break, um, I'll be reviewing the assembly priorities document and considering a next iteration of the document as we're getting closer to the end of the time frame for that. Last, I asked both Northwest Strategies and our assembly aides uh, to work on a sort of a 2020 uh, report card as it relates to our assembly priorities. I think it's going to take a little bit, uh, it's going to, it'll have a different feel and flavor than the quarterly comprehensive update. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all soon. Um, okay, that is it for assembly priorities. Let me just check the chat really quick. Okay, not seeing anything. We'll go ahead and move on to our assembly member discussion on pending business and update from committee upcoming business. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with folks on our uh, Teams live event, and then I'll end with folks here in person, which is John and I. So I'm just gonna go in alpha order, starting with Jamie. If you have anything you wanna share on committee business or uh, your individual assembly member business. And if you're trying to speak, Jamie, you're on mute. Okay, uh, I guess I'll, I'll come back to Jamie. Um, next, we'll go to Chris. Hi there, thanks. The Enterprise Utility Oversight Committee is on holiday, if you will, for the month. And we'll start back up with some briefings by uh, Solid Waste and AWWU. Uh, personal legislation, you will see in the addendum today, the release of the ordinance addressing the creation of recognition and acknowledgement in our code, starting with the native village of Aklutna. Thank you, Chris. Um, and just a reminder to the members, uh, feel free to turn on your video when you're speaking um, so that uh, folks on the live event can see you. Um, next, we're gonna go to Crystal. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, this was cut quite a goat rope for me trying to get all of this online and ready to go this morning, but anyway. Um, so um, I have, uh, I guess I'll report just a little bit on the public safety committee meeting and or the public safety committee, and that is that we have um, scheduled uh, the uh, director or coordinator, I'm sure she has a more formal title than that, but her name is Ingrid Cumberlidge with the Department of Justice, and she's going to speak to us in regards to the murdered and missing indigenous persons. So we have that coming up. Uh, uh, let's see, that'll be the first week of January. I'm going to look for the date here real quick, but it's the typical first Wednesday of the of the month, and so that's January 6th. Um, and then personally, I'm I'm not really working on this particularly, but I'm just kind of following it. And uh, I'll ask the administration to, uh, particularly Bob Dole, to give us an update on uh, Tuesday of the situation out at Forest Park. If you all remember, we passed an emergency ordinance in order to fund some money that would allow them to. Uh, uh, put water uh, out there for the people that have access, well, just don't have running water right now. So the municipality has been working on providing uh, water that they can actually come up to uh, like a water station and get water and then take it back to their, to their um, mobile homes. So anyway, I just thought we'd probably want some information about what that's costing us at this point and how some of that's going. So uh, I've talked to Bob to Get it, asked him to asked him to get an idea of uh, kind of where we're at with the expenditures on that right now. So hope to have that update on Tuesday. It's still not a pretty situation. It's quite um, a court uh, room mess right now. And but we are trying to do something. And like I said, we have approved that uh, emergency funding. So we'll get an update on that on Tuesday. Thanks. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, next, we're going to go to Cameron. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let's see. So 
Uh, where to start? Okay, so um, I think that, that probably the um, just a few so quick. Actually, up- sorry, Cameron. Uh, I I just noticed uh, that Chris had a question for Crystal. Oh. So go ahead, Chris. I'll pause. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, Crystal, I heard some story that the individuals from the trailer court are in fact using additional municipal resources, and in, in particular, showering at the McDonald Center. And I'm wondering if you have a report on that. And from my perspective, we should do whatever we can to support these families. And yes, Chris, you're correct. They they are using the locker room facilities there at McDonald Center. And uh, they were trying to use a nearby camp that was a little bit closer, the Birchwood um, camp, but that's a privately owned camp. And they were having to find volunteers and things like that. So it got a little convoluted. And uh, so the Mac Center was kind of the next uh, best choice. That's causing its own conflicts. (laughs) Um, But uh, but anyway, that is what they're doing. And and I don't know if we have a cost on that as well. Um, I think they're doing it during the hours that the center is regularly open, uh, but it could be more water costs. Um, So anyway, you know, again, it's just kind of all of those things that are costing the municipality right now. And within that, within that, um, oh gosh, was it a hundred, I think it was a hundred thousand dollars that we allocated for that. So hopefully we'll get more details uh, on Tuesday, but I will purposefully ask that specific one to Bob too, just so that he's, um, can get some numbers on that for us too. So, is that it, Chris? Is that? Yeah, thank you. I just okay, want to make thanks. sure folks sure. are up to speed. So, thank you. Sure, thanks. Thanks. Um, before I go to you, John, just want to note for the record that um, we have been joined by Jamie this entire time, but uh, I guess there are some technical issues. So, hopefully, we'll be able to hear and see Jamie soon. Uh, John, go ahead. Sure. Um, Crystal, could you just recap a little bit on the situation with this water? Is this a, I think it was a mobile home park. Was, is it on city water, on the AWU water, or is it like a totally a private issue, private well and, and a civil issue with the property owner or something? I just, you know, what's, so the city's in there helping out just, I guess, based on our. It know, is, it uh, is private. It's, it's. It, it is private property. It is not on city water. There are two wells that um, that they can access. The problem has been in the distribution pipes uh, that are probably leaking in a lot of places, maybe totally broken in a couple of others, but the bottom line is water does not get to the individual mobile homes. And this has been going on for a couple of people. This has been going on since the earthquake. And it got really bad uh, this fall where basically everyone lost um, uh, access because they couldn't, uh, because of the um, the problems with the pipes probably leaking, they couldn't guarantee the uh, integrity of the water. And so they basically had to shut down uh, the distribution pipes even though the wells are functioning just fine, but they had no idea what could be leaking into the system. So they really didn't have potable water. And there's been an argument with uh, the landowners and the department, uh, the um, DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, over the quality of the water. So they've been in court over this for a while. Uh, The tenants have sued the landlords. Um, DEC has fined the landlords. The landlords have decided that they're just going to call it quits. So they have issued a vacate uh, eviction notices to all of the residents by the end of May. People are saying, well, no, we can fix this. We're going to stay here and you have to fix it. And now they want the municipality to get involved and the municipality cannot get involved because it's private. Anyway, the whole thing is just unbelievably complicated and it's really sad no matter how you look at it. But the way that um, we intervened was um, Bob being the building um, uh, director said that because this is a this is kind of an emergency when people have no access to water, he was able to go in and basically provide water. So literally, I think just about every day they send a truckload of water to fill a large tank sitting in kind of the middle of the property and people can come over there with their buckets or containers or water pitchers for that matter, whatever container they want to use to refill their water and then tote it back to their individual mobile homes. So it's um, 
again, it's just a bit of a mess, um, but we are, have a very limited role right now in that. And a lot of it right now is in the court system in terms of any kind of final uh, decision on whether or not the mobile home park can move forward or people have to leave. Um, so anyway, a lot of confusion amongst the residents right now. But again, the municipality has a very limited role. So does that so, help? Uh, again, it's just a bit of a mess. Uh, yeah, that, that but helps a lot. we so, are, I mean, have a very limited kind of role right, right now in that, that brothels, and a lot of it right now is in the court system in terms of any kind of final a uh, decision yeah, on good. whether or not the mobile home park can move forward or people have to leave. Um, okay. So anyway, a lot of confusion amongst the residents right now. But again, the municipality has a very limited role. So does that and I don't know if you can hear me. John, I couldn't hear anything. There was like a recording um, of me of what I just said. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly what what you were saying. So there was some kind of feedback loop going on with a recording and I didn't hear anything else after that. So. Uh, the feedback might have been more interesting than what I had to say. No, the feedback was just me saying the same thing over again. So, <laughs> so I can hear you now. What what was it your what was your other comment then? Well, I, I just wanted to recap, you know, I, I I've hauled water in my life, in Fairbanks' life, and and then uh, so I'm familiar with their plight. I guess I, I thought it was actually okay, but um, but I just want to know why was the city involved since it's a private issue? And I, I think just because of our broad authority to protect public health, you know, that gave us the nexus to go in and help the poor people in this um, community. So and that's a good thing. Thanks. Yeah, correct. You're correct. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, Crystal, Chris, and uh, John. So we're going to go ahead and go back. Uh, sorry about that, Cameron. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. I, I don't have very, very many things. Just um, um, so uh, lots of constituent, as many, uh, all of you, lots of constituent communication, um, lots of folks concerned about EO 16 and, and, uh, and a variety of other things going on in our area. Um, uh, so just a big thanks to uh, to Jason Bakestead and the administration for uh, providing lots of help and feedback and resources as I try to answer all of those questions. Just want to really thank them for their responsiveness um, on all of that. Um, so we, I've had some pretty li lively um, um, community council meet meetings and 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 lots of lots and lots of con contact after those specifically be, be about EO 616. Um, uh, also uh, working a lot on the the new big development uh, at Ted's Ted Stevens International Airport off of Raspberry. There's been a number of, of meetings about that and um, lots of conversation and work on that. Um, I would I, I am very in, in, interested if anyone from the body of the administration has any most current updates on America's Best or a new site in place of the Alaska Club on Tudor. Um, getting lots and lots of questions about that and would love to give an update um, if there's any new information on either of those from anybody in the body. Um, and then uh, continuing to work on the longstanding problem in on the on the west side, specifically over in Sand Lake area on getting water and sewer to many of the um, neighborhoods over there that, that, that don't have have them. And so there's there's been a recent meeting on that and work, work on that. And then just um, uh, really proud to be a part of the work that uh, that that Chris mentioned that Chris Forrest and I have been working on for for quite some time now with um, with the the native village of Eklutna. We're really excited to bring that that forward and to begin that that process. Um, so I think that that's probably a good place for me to stop. But yeah, as as we're going through, um, you know, Meg or Chris on, on on the homeless committee or anybody else, if there is any update on those properties, I'd love to um, hear it. Thanks. Thanks. Before I turn over to the administration to see if they have an update, uh, Mr. Slipka, did you want to go ahead and read your comment into the record, please? Certainly, through the chair, this is in regards to Forest Park. Crystal captured pretty much all the facts. It's a private uh, property issue, and uh, they've been involved with the state um, because the owners for many years have not maintained the water system. And, you know, in the discussions I was a party to with Mr. Dole and 
Audrey Gray a few weeks back. Um, it's going to it would be cheaper to buy everyone a new mobile home and move them rather than to try and repair the water system. So I think uh, we've reached out to Alaska Housing Finance Corporation and um, there is some still some earthquake money floating around. So we're trying to resolve that issue, but um, it was correctly stated. The only reason we're involved is because we don't want to see 30 families become homeless. So what we can do to help make that not happen is, is why we're involved. That's it. For different systems, it's unbelievable. It's not okay. anybody's one person's fault, except that we should have been given the option to come down there. Because I know my technology Jamie. here sometimes Jamie. is scared. Yeah, we can hear you, Jamie. Okay. Don't, I'm not sure who she was talking to, but we heard her. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So thanks for that, Alex. Um, we'll go ahead and go to Mr. Pre uh, Cameron's question. Can someone from the administration provide an update on uh, the property purchases? All right. Um, yeah, usually these meetings, we don't necessarily invite the a bunch of folks from the administration to come in and speak, but maybe this is something that um, we can get an update on either written or at a future committee meeting, maybe the homelessness committee meeting or some other yeah. committee meeting can provide an update on the topic. Yeah, thanks. So I, I, I just figured if, if, if someone was more in the loop than, than me, then if they had something to say, no worries. Thanks. All right, um, I'm going to try to make sure that you guys can hear us uh, well and clear. Um, OK, so we'll go ahead and move on to Pete. Oh, sorry, actually, before that, um, Crystal, I see you uh, had something. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted you to know that Jamie Allard is having trouble with her um, computer. She can't hear uh the um audio and she can't speak uh, on anyway uh so i actually have her on speaker phone with me so um anyway i uh, just kind of want to let you know and obviously that you know that's quite a concern if we can't do this correctly with everybody then we probably need to figure this out before we move on too much further i mean i think for now we might be okay, but um, you know, somebody Can I speak up and okay. go on the record, Crystal, just letting them know I am here. My voice, please. Can you hear her, Felix? She's just on my cell phone right next to the computer. Can you hear her, Jamie? Yes, I, I can hear Jamie. And um, we did have, I did say it on the record that Jamie was available. We also did hear Jamie earlier on her own device. So I, I think it appears yeah. that her device is, is working, but we do have um, folks who are trying to reach out and see if we can get this issue fixed. Um, so clerk's office is on it. I think it might have something to do with her computer, though, not necessarily. Can, Go ahead, Jen. I can see everybody and I can hear, but OK, let's just see if clerk's office can help me. And then I'm fine with um, being able to work through Crystal. Uh, Crystal, I might even have to walk down to your house. <laughs> <laughs> that would work, too. Actually, I'll just do that. So. Uh, um, um, can I come down to your house? Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'm going to walk down. I'll see you in about four and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. 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 So I think we might have an answer, at least temporarily, Mr. Chair. So. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, go ahead. Go back to you, Pete. Uh, great. Thanks, Bailey. Can you hear me? Let me see if I can get my camera turned on here, too. Yeah, we can hear you. I guess I'm down here in the corner. OK. Um, well, the we combined our November and December Ethics and Election Committee meetings and had it uh, on the 9th. And um, uh, we, you know, we're uh, working on that update to Title 28 and we have a work session on that uh, uh, this afternoon. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping we can, it's on our agenda for Tuesday, 
and I'm hoping we can get that passed. That's something the committee has been working on for uh, quite some time. We had a subcommittee working on that and we've um, made really good progress on that and I'm liking the way it's looking right now. Uh, also um, been uh, working with AML, the governor's budget came out a week ago and so we've been diving into details on that and uh, anticipating what might be happening during the legislative session, which looks like it could last for quite some time again this year. Uh, we're still not sure whether they're going to be actually in Juneau or whether they're going to go down and vote to allow themselves to uh, vote remotely like like uh, we have that capability. And so uh, uh, some of the legislators I've spoken with think that that's a, a possibility that they may go down uh, gavel in and, and vote to be able to do it uh, their work remotely and then people head back out of town but that's strictly speculation at this point um, and uh, the the one of the biggest things in uh, about the governor's budget that I'm not sure you all have heard about is uh, there's talk about a five thousand dollar dividend uh, and the worry uh, amongst people uh, that I've spoken to or one of the worries is that that's not sustainable long term. Uh, but the reason the governor is coming out and doing that is because uh, we're we're in a, an, an economic downturn. Uh, we were in one before uh, the uh, pandemic started and now it's obviously much worse than it was before. And so um, his motivation from what it appears to me is to uh, to try to stimulate the economy with that. And so we'll uh, we'll have to see what the legislature eventually decides on that. So, um, yeah, it's sort of a work in progress here right now as far as the uh, looking at the budget is concerned. But if uh, if anything really important comes out, I can forward some information to you that uh, that we get from AML that Suzanne and I get from AML regularly. And I think that's a, about my it for my report. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. Um, before we move on, we're going to take a short five minute break. For folks, we are on a short five minute break, so we will get back uh, to business here soon. That's why you're not hearing anything.
All right, we're going to go ahead and get started again. From my understanding, uh, Jamie is back with us. Um, okay, so we're going to continue on with our assembly member discussion on pending business and update from committee's upcoming business. Um, we ended with Pete. We'll go next to Meg. Thanks. Um, just a few things. Um, Yesterday at the um, so the homelessness committee did not meet in December. Um, let's start with that. We'll be back in January. Um, in particular, we'll be taking up um, what the next iteration of the anchored home um, plan will look like, um, and also we'll be bringing before the committee um, the question of if the committee should change its name from the inquiry or from the assembly's committee on homelessness to the assembly's committee on housing and homelessness we are hearing repeatedly um, that the shortage of housing units and affordable housing is really driving um, homelessness and it's a pillar that we don't really have an assembly committee um, devoted to or a piece of that puzzle so um, i look forward to a discussion about that at the committee meeting um, yesterday, um, we had the Anchorage Coalition to End Homelessness is, this is Advisory Council meeting, um, and they passed a resolution that will be coming to the assembly um, that I wanted to give everyone a heads up about today. Um, it was specifically to request as new shelter is stood up or shelters are um, contracted through the municipality, whether that's the Sullivan Arena, the Fairview Rec Center, or non-congregate spaces that uh, HMIS, um, the Homeless um, Information Management System, be utilized. Um, there are some data discrepancies um, and this can have some ongoing effects. The resolution really lays it out well, both in terms of knowing need, um, individual status as whether or not they still meet uh, the definition of chronically homeless um, and some other things. So um, as that's forwarded through and we share it with all members, please reach out if there are any questions um, or concerns about that. And my understanding is the municipality is already working hard to uh, look at solutions to that issue, but it's one that's come up repeatedly um, about the consistency of data entry um, across all of our partners um, throughout the coalition of which the municipality is part of. Um, other than that, um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, the subcommittee on communications and the chair. Um, we've um, had really good and quick movement with the assembly 101 videos. Um, I've been sharing those and where to access them at community councils. I think it's a great reminder. Um, and while the website might be under uh, a redesign or a pro process of redesign, um, the updates to the assembly's website um, and highlighting the most uh, used items um, have been really great um, to work through uh, constituent and resident engagement. So I think that's all I have for now, um, and I will have some new stuff in the new year, but uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, after Tuesday night to take a short recharge break um, and then come back at it in the new year. Thanks. Thanks, Meg. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and go back to Jamie, see if she has anything to report. Uh, thank you, Chair Rivera. I don't have anything to report, and I... I know there have been technical difficulties, so I apologize for everything. Just a few days ago, my system worked, so I, I don't know what happened. Uh, thank you very much, though. Oh, I do have one thing to report. We do have a audit uh, yearly plan that will be coming out, and we're going to be discussing that in January um, the 5th to go over with all details of what our audit plan will look like for the year. That's it. Thank you, Chair. Great. Thanks so much. All right, next we'll go to John. Well, thanks. Uh, on the Community Economic Development Committee, we are making pretty good progress on possible changes to the marijuana code. It's uh, fairly extensive. We've gotten through the bulk of the list. A couple the more challenging parts will be, should we change the um, uh, various uh, protected areas, protected uses, and so on. And then something that Crystal's been working on that's also very important is, is at what point, what triggers close review by the assembly on any particular particular license review. But we're heading that way pretty quickly. So I'd expect we'll have something through the committee 
uh, in probably mid or late January. Uh, we also had assigned to us at a, the previous assembly meeting uh, looking at the issue at Campbell Lake and access to Campbell Lake at the Community Economic Development Committee. And we will be looking at that sometime in January. I'm not sure which of the two meetings will do that yet. But we've cut, brought in the issue a little bit because the, many of the issues at Campbell Lake are things that are not even municipal issues. It's, it's dueling plats and what is the status of the lake? Is it public? Is it private? And that is stuff that will be decided in court. But however it lands, we have a continuing issue is how does the city handle access to our lands, other public lands, and so on? There's a lot of easements and rights of way out there that have not been used and property owners have just assumed that it's their property, put sheds on it or blocked it or, or, or maybe they've just overgrown. So people don't know that they're there and they're not very usable. So solving or just getting a grip on that and seeing should we make changes, how can we start to kind of assert the use of these easements and rights away um, is, will be more of the focus and avoid the stuff with Campbell Lake that we really have no control over. You know, at, at AMAP, working with uh, Chris and Meg, we, we have a resolution we've been kicking around for about a month and a half, but basically it, it talks about the connection of the highway. It was highway to highway, now it's broken into Midtown Congestion Relief and Fairview Connection. But there's, uh, with, with the unknown, where is that road going to go through Fairview? The buildings there are in, oh, okay, I'm sorry, the buildings there are in limbo. And so we have a resolution for the uh, study that will be go starting soon, hopefully on that, that it focus on one route and really identify one route so that the property owners and residents in the area know what to expect instead of being in sort of under this purgatory that they're in now. We also had a really good presentation yesterday on the issue of the crossing the Tudor and Wright Streets near where the rescue mission is and the number of people who've been hit by pedestrians who've been hit by cars there. And it was interesting how hard it is with a wider high-speed road to put limits on it. And the interconnected um, nature of our whole system and the point was made that if we got the highway connected and drew more people to the highway, then there would be less people on Tudor. We might, in fact, actually be able to narrow that so it's more useful for businesses, walkers, bikers, and still work well for cars. So, um, th so that was a really fascinating um, presentation by Scott Thomas with the uh, left at DOT. So those are highlights. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, all right, so I will... Yeah, thanks. It's... it's uh... One of the things for being in person, we have to make sure that we are speaking loudly and very close to the mic. So we'll make sure that we are on top of that from here on out. My apologies. Um, okay, so next is my report. So two things. Uh, first is uh, we'll, I am continuing to explore the idea of fair free transit with the help of the Public Transit Advisory Board and the Public Transit Department. Um, I suspect that the Public Transit Advisory Board will be passing a resolution in January on the topic. Um, because of a constituent issue, second thing, because of a constituent issue which came up recently, um, I'll be taking a look and uh, others interested feel free to join again at Scofflaw and any changes we may want to make to this program. Folks will remember pre-COVID. Uh, in February that this was a big issue for the body and our ombudsman did a detailed memo and report to us with some recommendations. So I think it's probably time for us to revisit that issue. Um, and that is it from me. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, move on to our other items, uh, D under new business. First is COVID-19. So just like last month, I went wanted to create space uh, to have an open discussion about any issues which have come up regarding COVID-19 that folks want the assembly to engage in, either through committee process or work session or other forums. I have one item to kick this off and then we can open it up to other items. Um, just before I do that, Meg, was your cue on the prior or is it on this? On this after you do your item. Thank you. Got it. Thanks. Um, so first first item I wanted to go through listed on the agenda is ASD and MOA. 
So the Anchorage School Board passed a resolution this week directed to the municipality and thus us. Um, and so the resolution is shared on the screen. Um, Barbara, if we can go ahead and go down to the whereas, or not the whereas clauses, but the therefore resolve clauses. So um, the ask from the school board, uh, they had two. So uh, for us to continue to partner with the Anchorage School District um, and then to uh, prioritize uh, a phased in uh, return to in-person instruction whenever we consider any COVID-19 mitigation restrictions and measures. Um, so understanding that the health policy committee has taken leadership on this issue thus far, um, what do we want to do with this? Um, is there any interest in um, having the health policy committee continue working with the school district on this or any other thoughts? Um, so I'm just going to assume the two folks in the queue are on other topics. Um, so if anyone else wants to talk on this, please put yourself uh, in the chat. Uh, go ahead, Meg. Thank you. Um, so I, I think um, you know, the two items that they're requesting here, you know, there is, I, I believe, a pretty good partnership going on between the school board and the municipal, I'm sorry, the school district and the municipality. We heard that at Health Policy Committee. Um, the other seems to be a timing question um, in terms of as EO16 um, comes to, you know, a, a point of decision again at the end of the month, beginning of next month. Um, and I think that's a conversation, um, you know, that the assembly and the administration could certainly have if that's something that's desired to be done through the health policy committee, we can certainly make space for that. Um, I know uh, we're very interested in making sure that we can help be a conduit to ensure um, open and uh, transparent communication on this specific issue of the return to school. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, John? Uh, you know, I think um, people want kids back in school pretty generally, but I, I don't know if I would say the highest priority necessarily. It's a high priority. I don't know if I'd spin the whole city based on it, given many unknowns with the virus. Thanks. Pete? Uh, thanks, Felix. And I don't know if other people have seen it. The, uh, uh, the school district had, had a public service announcement uh, connecting wearing masks and, and uh, you know, doing washing your hands and, and that type of thing to getting the kids back in school. Um, and, so they're they're out there trying to convince people that if we want to get the kids back in school, we you know we've got to get our act together and get control of this virus. And so hopefully people will be listening to that message. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seeing no other discussion, I, I'll go ahead on this topic. I will coordinate with the leadership of the health policy committee and the leadership of the school board uh, to see if there's a clear path forward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to um, other topics, um, starting with Meg. Thank you. I was one. Oh, I was wondering if we could get an update on the EOs to AOs project. Um, I'm uncertain if that's still in the works um, and where it might be. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, John, do you want to speak to that? It's still important. Uh, it's still alive. I have not uh, made much progress on it. The um, so it's still there. I guess no update from the previous one. We have a you know the I think we all saw an ordinance that listed every item that was in the current mandate, and, and I don't think that quite gets to where we need to be. But um, we're still looking at it. Thanks. And, and I guess uh, Suzanne's not here, otherwise, hello. 
Uh, Suzanne's not here, otherwise I think she might say more, but um, uh, I will say that there, uh, there was a request for collaboration between the administration and the assembly on going forward with this process. And so um, uh, for transparency's sake, that collaboration has begun. And so um, curious to see how we decide to move forward and uh, how we move forward on this project. It, it may take a very different form than what was previously presented at last month's school's committee meeting. Um, okay, moving on to Crystal. Thanks, Felix. Um, I, I think there's been uh, some a good effort uh, on the uh, clerk's office, the municipality, uh, to try to get information out to the public just in regards to the um, CARES Act funding. And what I'm hoping is that we could also include in that the actual ordinances and resolutions that we've passed uh, that talks about uh, what things are being funded. I know we had the um, ordinance that switched the funding source from CARES Act funding into basically the fund balance. So um, I know I've had a couple of requests for that document and then I have to go looking for it. So it would be nice if it was actually, uh, if those documents were online too. I think there's pretty good summaries of what the uh, ordinances have actually done just in, in terms of what their effect or impact were, but it would be nice to have the actual documents so that people can really track things kind of the same way we did um, when we were uh, approving those things. So um, my request is just that we put the ordinances and uh, resolutions that have to do with the way the funding has been allocated if we put those specific documents online as well. So thanks. Crystal, request noted, we can uh, work on making that happen. Um, is, is there any other discussion on this topic? Yeah, Mr. Constantine. Yep, yeah, thanks. You know, on that note, uh, I also have been working with the administration to follow the lead of Fairbanks and develop a report that demonstrates where all the funds went, including right down to individual businesses and entities that we're successful in receiving funds. Um, it's not likely something that happens before the end of the year because their focus, as I have had it reported to me, and I agree this is the primary goal, is to ensure that we spend all the money and not see any of it returned because it didn't get spent by the end of the year. But once that's concluded, I'm very hopeful in the discussions with the administration that we will have a comprehensive report that identifies exactly to whom and where the funds went. Felix, can I ask a question on that? Oh, sure, go ahead, Crystal. Well, my understanding is that that list, and I believe I've seen it, that we've had, we do have a list of who's received those funds. Uh, I think Cook Inlet released, Cook Inlet Lending released one list. Um, anyway, so I don't think it would be that hard to, to at least come up with that, you know, even now, I think some of that's available. Yeah, if I might, I, I would offer, though, for my part, I want it to be comprehensive as opposed to piecemeal. We've seen all the pieces here and there. I want to hopefully see it all together in one place. And so I, they've, I've never been denied access when I ask for, hey, has this entity or have these people been receiving the funds? But we have United Way, Cook and Lending Center. We have the Business Boutique Program. We have all of these different programs. And um, my hope, again, once they've gotten through the end of the year is that we see all of that composed into a really concise record of the impact of the CARES Act investments in the community. Thanks. Open it up one last time. Is there any other discussion on this topic? All right, seeing none, move on to our last topic, uh, email voting in 2021. So this item was uh, accidentally placed on our agenda, but as a way of introduction, uh, we will be making a policy decision next year about access to email voting. From what I understand, the Ethics and Elections Committee has begun talking about this topic and should be providing some type of official recommendation to the body. When we get that recommendation, I'll likely call a work session or a special rules committee meeting 
to discuss how we want to proceed before we put something on our regular assembly agenda that addresses this. Um, so that, that's more of an FYI rather than a discussion point. Um, okay, I think that is it for other items. Um, we don't have anything other under unfinished business. We'll move on to audience participation. Uh, we'll do in person and then um, we will open up the Q&A and see if any folks have participated in there. So let me turn around our camera. Welcome. Uh, your mic's not on. Yellow button. Thanks. Is that on now? It is, yes. Um, okay, thank you. My name is Eugene Carl Hedman. I live in the Maxi Valley. Follow the public process. When the public process is done appropriately, a decision made by the governing body is more likely to public interest. Since uh, April 4th, I've been doing an audit of the public process regarding Anchorage, Ms. Powell of Anchorage, and staying on to the valley and state meetings. Now, for some time ago, I, I believe it was the Economic Development Committee, I reminded some of the members there remotely that you need to have these committee meetings in the assembly chambers. I've been asking for that for some time. And uh, I was pleased to see uh, Assembly Member Kennedy respond quickly to, again, these concerns. And today is the first effort to address that and bring it to many meeting in these chambers. But this way you did this meeting, and I understand nothing's perfect. You have to deal with certain issues. But I, I witnessed this scenario, this meeting, and you need to go back to how you handle the river, so many meetings in this chamber. You can't do a combination of technology that creates a real difficulty with assembly members calling in, connecting, as well as public. This is proven here. Don't take two different technologies. You're already aware, aware, well aware that the assembly meetings here that are handled in this room, particularly alternate Tuesday nights, you, you see it so much better. Don't make it, don't go into this direction. Stay with what you already know that's proven with some uh, things that you need to work on. But, uh, and then also want to address this is that getting the public here is critical and the public being witnessing what you're doing. There are only two members of the assembly present. So the end result also is you are the only two members of the assembly are present in this room to witness how this thing worked in this room. Though there are assembly members who are trying to call in and connect aware of how it worked on the other end. So we don't have two different views and unknowns that both parties do not know. And then I'd like to close with this, to remind you, you have an initial audience participation and audience participation final in the meetings. The last regular assembly meeting, I don't recall seeing a single member called in on final. And I had signed up for initial and I'm trying to recall when you did that on initial, and I did listen remotely the entire meeting with respect. Thank you very much, and I wish you the very best, and happy holidays, and thank you. Thank you. All right, we don't have anyone else here in person, um, so we'll go ahead and go to our Q&A. Um, so I'll make our, the first call, uh, would anyone like to add something to the Q&A? And I'll just check in, Desiree, do we have anyone right now? Got it. Okay, so it looks like uh, we have folks on, uh, members of the public on our phone system. So would any uh, members of the public uh, like to participate? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Louis Imbriani, um, and I just wanted a few moments. I'm not 100% sure if this is the right place, um, but I did want to speak um, and testify directly um, to the chair, Mr. Rivera, um, about 
uh, rules of the assembly chambers um, and the Wilda Martins Marston Theater. Um, I know that you've created this list of rules for decorum, and I was just requesting that we would be allowed to clap, only clap, after a member of the public goes up and testifies. It's a positive thing for somebody who is not very good at public speaking to hear that type of return, whether it's people who are agreeing or simply saying, thank you for taking the time out of your evening to come and say a few words about how you feel. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to participate on our uh, phone system? All right, not hearing anyone else. Um, I, let's go ahead and go back to the Q&A. Do we have anyone in there? Mr. Chair, there is one, um, one member in the Q&A, and the question is, where can members of the public access the audit report for the clerk's office? It cannot be located on the internal audit page. Thank you. Barbara, do you want to address that one? Yes, Mr. Chair. The clerk's audit is located on the assembly web page under the rules committee meeting for today. If you would like to email the clerk's office, our email address is www.masmc at anchorageak.gov. And if you would email us there, we'll send you a copy of that audit management report. And then Barbara, is this also a report that the assembly is gonna accept at one of our meetings? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, if you would like that, I can submit it to the, not the 22nd, but I can submit it to the January meeting. Yeah, let, let's look into doing that. Okay. Uh, okay, um, just, so let's go ahead and go back. Do we have anyone else in the Q&A? All right, not seeing anyone else. Uh, just one final comment on my end. Um, again, a huge thanks to uh, clerk's office, OIT, and others for helping make today possible. This has been um, both Crystal, Meg, John, and I have sat through um, a variety of different tests on the system, and um, uh, compared to the first test, I think we've come a long way to improving the system, and I think we'll have more um, improvements to make. Um, I, I will say um, I was hopeful today that we would have more people in person uh, for this meeting. Um, I want to encourage, just like we do for um, our uh, regular assembly meetings, you know, if we want to do sort of a half and half scenario, half assembly members here in person, half online, um, I think that would be great. And then also um, we'll work on ensuring um, uh, that assembly members have all of the information they need to uh, access live events because as assembly members know live events are very different uh, very different technology that you need to uh, have from regular work sessions so we'll work on some maybe some type of checklist uh, for assembly members so you know if you're going to be participating making sure you know all the steps that you need to take um, otherwise um, looking forward to continuing these types of hybrid meetings i think they're going to be an important trend uh, in the future as uh, folks, we've seen more folks being able to access um, meetings online. Yesterday, Abilene Community Council meeting probably broke a record for how many people attended. Um, so I think more people are getting used to virtual spaces. So uh, having this type of hybrid meeting, I think is gonna be important. All right, with that, I think that completes our agenda today. So we will go ahead and adjourn and I'll see everyone at one o'clock at our uh, work session. Thank you.